All right, Mr. X must have gotten busy. I called him, and uh, he, uh, I don't know what he said. Uh, I guess he was about to eat or something. But, you know, sometimes when you waiting on people, they keep you waiting all day unless you just tell them, wait another time. But uh, let me go back into some of this uh, recording then since I'm here and uh, see what we could do, see if we could bring out some more points because this is heavy. Somebody would say, why would it even bother you? Because I personally feel and I personally see for myself that the wrong man and women in position of a man is just like homosexuality. That's exactly what it is. It's spiritual homosexuality. Notice I didn't say natural homosexuality. It's spiritual homosexuality. Because a woman in a dominant position over men is emasculating a man. She's taking his position from him. Because she's playing the part of a man. It's like a man getting beat up by a woman boxer. Or a woman be beating a man at anything that she beats him in. And it's not to say that they can't do it. So that's why a man have to be... I remember one time I was at a wrestling uh, match. And they was letting this young lady wrestle. I call the young lady. She wasn't no young lady. This girl, this female wrestler, she's a young lady. She wouldn't have been trying to wrestle. But I told the guy that she was going to wrestle, wrestle her like she's a man. Don't give her no chance at all. That's exactly what I told her. I said, don't even, don't even give her no benefit of the doubt. Get in there when she knock her down, squeeze her, pin her, make her look like she shouldn't be in there because she shouldn't. Don't even make it look like she should be in there with you because that's going to make her look good. Don't give her no type of nothing. Don't even give her a break. No kind of break. Just beat her down. You might say I was wrong, but I know I was right because she should go put on an apron somewhere and go bake some cookies. Praise the Lord. Go bring the br go bring the male wrestlers some, some some lunch or something. Get out of here. Yeah, that's the bottom line. And you can like it or you don't. And that's what we have when we have women in the pulpit. All these men, and regardless of whether some men are doing right or wrong, well, we we need more men to get get right. And a woman feeling like she's gonna take a man's place. It's not, it's not the answer. Because when a woman is trying to take a man's place, who's taking the woman's place? See, it's just like when you're playing any game. When you're, playing some, when you're saying somebody else is sorry in their position, and you're trying to play their position, now who's playing your position? See, you, you can't play both parts. You can't be male and female. Because one of them going to go lacking. You can't serve two masters. One of them going to go lacking. You got two women, two men, more than one, what, you're going to go lacking. You know, I, 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 the, the, reason, the reason I would never do it, now when I was weak and, and out of it, I would do it. But since I've changed from that, I would never do it because I noticed that men who are under women, and I see it in the homes too, where mothers are over the homes, the men... The, the women, the girls become angry and out of control, and the men become soft and angry. Okay, well, let me say this to you. And because, know, you know, that's why I would never I know, but my, but submit my point to that. Is you, I, I appreciate your, your view on that, but you've been hanging out with the wrong one. Because if you meet my husband, you understand that he ain't soft. And uh, he, he's a real, a, real, a real man will obey God. But that's not a woman. Man does. But a real and man my children, will. And my Hold it. She said a real man would obey God. And he's not soft. And let's bring that up. There are a lot of hard men that are homosexuals. All men that are homosexuals are not soft. Now, let's walk into the Jezebel spirit. 
There are a lot of mothers that have been Jezebel. Grandmothers, mothers, sisters, aunts, females, period. Women pastors, women bishops, women apostles, women bosses over men. And I'm especially, I'm not talking about them being over women. I'm especially talking about them over being men. Because they have to be stronger. They have to change their voice. Because a man... And men are most likely, if they, they're going to be attracted to a female. So a woman has to act other than her feminine self. That's where they came up with feminists. Because a feminist, not feminine, a feminist woman can act like a man. Feminine means she's going to act dainty. And men are going to be attracted to dainty. Even if they listen, they're thinking about, mm, just like if a woman knocking on the door with the Bible. And she's acting dainty and feminine, not feminist, not, I'm here to, to give you the Bible. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about Jesus. The man is turned on by femin femininity. He's masculine. The opposite of masculine is feminine. The opposite of masculinity is femininity. But a feminist woman can be a lesbian in that, or a butch or a dyke or in a man's position. That's not to say that some women that still act feminine can't do the same thing, can't be butchy, can't be dykey, can't be bossy, because some of them are. But she says he will obey God. If he would obey God, he would know she's wrong. Or he would even challenge the same scriptures I just gave you. So she's contradicting herself. It's psychology, man. It's demonic psychology. It's like a man telling you he's a, uh, he has a vagina or a woman telling you she has a penis. That's what it's like. And they're trying to convince you something that you looking Right at and say, no man has a vagina, no woman has a penis. And even if you gave them one, they still, that would be altering the original. My children are very healthy, and my children are saved and love the Lord, and all my, ch my children know who they are. So the order of God, it's, there's a lot that we have to deal with here. Yes. But the bottom line is that I think that we need to deal with it by the spirit and not by the flesh, not by culture, and not by what people have taught. The spiritual so, order, uh, Pastor, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but according to the Bible, the spiritual order of God is God in Christ, Christ over man, I mean, God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. That is the order. Okay, uh, let's, now, let's, I, let's, let's, you, do you agree you, with that? You let, let, let you limited that. What I would agree with is that's up and down, but what about sideways? You're just doing it up and down, okay? There is the no sideways. You gonna let me finish? There the Bible is. says that that man is the head of his wife, not the right. woman. Right. So in my in my house, my husband is the head, and it is beyond me that people will believe that you can't run a men. Hold up. She just said that the Bible says that the husband is the head of the wife, not the woman. Isn't a woman a wife? But that's a lie, too. What kind of words she been re reading? Wife is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. And it says, obey him in all things, not just in the home, in all things. That's Ephesians 5, 22. But if but she said it doesn't it says he's supposed to obey no she's supposed to he's the head of the wife not the woman in other words like the woman is separated from the wife the three stooges smack oh man it makes me crazy see I have to see that's how I have to control myself see there's no one here for me to debate with. I'm just going to see and that's how I am when I'm debating somebody that live, it makes me upset, not mad, just upset and angry because they playing with the word. But maybe they mean, maybe they really mean it. Maybe they really are that deceived and that's hurting.
because they telling you you feel with the devil. She's telling this man he done met the wrong people and he's under the wrong ministry. He needs to meet people that's like her. But, oh, Jesus. Let's go back a minute. Let's go back. In the street and not and not let your husband be the head of the house. And and really What do you mean by let him be the head of the house? I mean uh -huh. a woman a woman don't have to let a man be the no, head. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, they do have to submit that's what submission is. No, but not because she's letting him to be a head. What what you may not realize, and maybe you do, is that a real man of God because of God's spirit working through him, his wife has no other choice but to become the head. No, no, I mean, that, but that, to become, I don't, I don't to submit to that. him. To I submit think that's two way because you know what? First of all, the Bible says you got to submit one to another, and there are so many men that are not submitted to God. And I would be fearful if I was a woman following a man that wasn't submitted to God. So, in in the whole order, it looks like she has a man. That's not submitted to God, but a man that's submitted to exactly what she said the opposite of religion. He submitted to religion and he submitted to her, but he's not submitted to God. But because she's powerful by having a congregation and connections and he has gotten connections, it's almost like being a drug dealer to some degree. There are people who have, I mean, they come from all walks of life. But there are people that have come out of the drug world and any other part of the world and got involved in the church business from whatever worldly business they were incorporated in and really never got saved or born again. But they became religious and business-minded according to church organized business. And that's what it seems that we have here. And her being a drug dealer herself, as she said, she, it, no, ma, all right. Some women look tough and you can see it in them. And if they've been drug dealers, they were street savvy. I don't care what color they are. They are rough. You can't be no drug, you can't be no successful drug dealer 99.99% .99 of the time and don't be rough because you're dealing with savages, not just the users, but the competition of other drug dealers. It's a rough game like business. And in order for you to establish yourself in the game, you have to play the game the way the game is played, and you have to play it like a savage. So if a woman was successful in that game, sometimes, like I said, using, but even if you were a drug dealer and you were presented with time or probation, speculation, because some are, I don't know their testimony, it could put you in League with organizations, church. And you say, okay, rather than, okay, like she said with him, he was facing life. Maybe at one time she was facing some years. Who knows? Or she just got lucky or blessed. I don't even want to use the word blessed when you using the word of God unrighteously. Hold it. That's just like now. I'm going to give you an example. If they said a man was a homo, right? men but the man got up in the pulpit or anywhere and preached against homosexual if he really was if he really was a homosexual at least he told you the truth not to be a homosexual i'd appreciate the homosexual man that might be hiding he's a homosexual or confessing that he's a homosexual but telling you the truth about the word of God that the homo, that homosexuality is a sin and it'll take you to hell. Then a homosexual that because they don't want to stop being a homosexual will tell you it's okay to be a homosexual. I'll say it again. If a man is a homosexual whether confessing 
or hiding it on the download. But if he's preaching the word and he tells me or you or anyone else the truth, it's wrong to be a homo. He told the truth, whether he's a homo or not. If he was a liar, if he was a thief, but if he told you when he told you the word, you can't go to heaven being a liar, being a thief, being this, being that, being a sinner, you must be born again. He preached the word right. Now, you might call him a hypocrite if you find out that he told a lie or he stole something or he was a homo or he's a womanizer. But if he told you it's wrong to fornicate, it's wrong for adultery, it's wrong for this. If he preached that word right, you can't say he's a you can say he's a false prophet, but you'd be a liar. Because he gave you the word through and through, just like a, a, if a lawyer tell you the truth, even if the lawyer is a liar themselves, but they tell you the truth. If a judge what they do behind closed door, but when they if they carry their job out to its fullest professional righteous extent, you might call them a hypocrite for what they do behind closed doors. Maybe they might be snorting cocaine. Maybe they might be doing orgies or but when they come to business, they take care of business correct. I respect a man. carrying out business, especially the business of God, correct, even if he is not correct. I respect a woman that's carrying the word of God correct, even if she's not correct, because we are fighting to get correct. And you can't get correct if you're going to lie on the word of God. When a person will twist the word of God and lie using the word of God, I can't trust you at all. Even if I want to, I don't care if you're the smoothest talking man, most eloquent, know how to put your words together, your syllables, and you're the smoothest talking woman. You act so nice and, can, and dainty. Uh-uh. If you a liar with the word of God, or you don't know you lying, so you deceive. If I see that the devil has you so deceived that either you know you're wrong and doing wrong with the word, or you don't know you're wrong and doing wrong because you think you're right. Then once I recognize you deceive, well, I can't trust you. That's like if a man tells you he's a homo, a woman tells you they're a lesbian, then they tell you it's okay. It's okay. I don't care how good you are at anything. I can't trust you. I can't trust you. If you lie, if you will be untruthful with the word of God, you'll be untruthful with anything. If you're not scared of, of playing with the word of God, you definitely not scared of me and anyone else, basically. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little upset, man. I take this stuff serious. I really do. I take it serious. There's a whole lot of things that have to be put in place. Okay, number one, is that man submitted to God? And number two, it take, that's what, you need to go and look up the definition of submission. Just because a man is who he is in the spirit, and if he married a wrong woman with the wrong kind of spirit on her, that don't make him the head. Because he married her, she has to submit to that headship or their house is going to be full of hell. I understand that you're right in what you're saying, but I, what I... He's still the head even if she doesn't submit. Did we just say that First Corinthians said God is the head of Christ, Christ is the head of man. Even if, even if man doesn't obey Christ, Christ doesn't lose his position. The man loses his position. So if a man is the head of woman and woman doesn't obey, the man doesn't lose his position. So he don't play the woman because the woman don't want to listen to him. Just like a woman don't play a man because a man doesn't play his part. She can never be a man and a man can never be a woman. And that's what we live in with the world today. Satan has been changing things ever since Adam and Eve. He told Eve, I'll, you'll become as a God. If you eat from that tree that God told you not to eat of, if you touch it and eat it, you'll be as a God. And that's where women at. Women are, they're not God, but, they, but people are calling some women God and goddess, queen. 
leader, boss. Praise the Lord. I think I'll end it here.